course it's second layer it's underneath other ones my lightest is going to be my darkest jello and then I'm going to put the green back in with some of my darker greens and that's the spring green make sure everything on the bottom where it doesn't hit the light is darker everything south of the terminator line has to be darker than above the line so even the lightest area down here has to be darker than the darkest area up here all of these pencils blend really nicely with each other because all you you got the same undertones going and if it's not the same undertone it's an undertone that will blend in nicely you only have those really bad ugly colors popping up where you don't expect it when your undertones are not good they're not a match I'm gonna hit it with my white in a minute to blend it you can use a little bit of mineral spirits to help it along or a blending pen I might do that later on. Okay, I'm gonna finish up because this is gonna get to be a very, very long video. I'm gonna do this to all of these and then we're gonna add our shadows in. I'm letting you check in on the progress. I also wanna add the color sepia. Sepia is going to be our cast shadow color. And because, now the reasons why I'm going to use sepia is because gray does not Gray, the gray, color gray does not blend well with yellow, and there's a lot of yellow in this picture. So if I use sepia first, I get like a buffer between the yellow and the grays. When I do switch over to my grays for the shadows, I'm going to use the warm grays, which will are better than the blue grays. Um, blue grays would not it would dull down this picture because this picture is so warm and I want to keep it very warm. So I'll let you see what happens when I add the sepia. Let me find a good one in here. See, it blends in with the yellow undertones in the green and the actual yellow on the paper, much nicer than pure gray would. And as I said, if I need a darker color, I can always go over the sepia with the gray. This is where I'm up to right now. And while there's wax on the paper, I want you to take a look at the reference photo again. And I'm putting up one that is really up close. Look at the level of detail in the shading on each grape. That makes the difference between your picture looking like a picture and your picture looking realistic. It's the level of detail. So now we're back to my picture right now where I'm up to. I've got my wax and I've got a lot of the shading that's in there, my tonal values. Now I want to make it smooth and I want to get the details in. The problem is that I ran out of tooth on the paper. And I very rarely use this, but I did with this, in this case, I got out my texture fixative. This one happens to be by brush and pencil. It's not cheap. That's all I could say. It's not cheap. Um, I bought it long ago. On the flip side of it, I very rarely use it. And I've got 90%. Of it still in the can and it's been well over a year since I bought it when using this make sure that your nozzle is cleared I ran mine under some hot water and then really washed it out so you get a very even spray 
And what I did was I waited 15 minutes and I gave it a second coat. It will curl the paper ever so slightly. If you tape your paper down during the drying process, it won't be as bad. For me, it's a little bit, it's not much. When I put this into a book, it will flatten out. Um, this is my original artwork, so I'm gonna keep this picture, of course. Um, I also like the way it's coming out. So I've got a nice fresh coat of tooth and I'm ready to start my upper layers and my details. Now, if you look on here, this one is almost done. I still have a little bit of details to do on it, but you can see a big difference between this and say this one or this one, where these are obviously not worked on as much as I did this one. So my recommendation to you is if you are a beginner and you say, I'm done, work on it for another hour so that you are 100% happy with each and every grape. And at the end, you're going to be happy with the general picture. In addition to this, the leaf, I'm not going to do in this video. The video was just too long. I'm going to be handling leaves in another video. Don't worry about the leaf for now. Either leave it blank or do it if you want. But we will be handling leaves completely separate. If you take a long look, a long hard look at the shading on the grapes, you will notice that they have little brown flecks. And there's actually a lot of them. And every grape has that white going around the side. Now, I don't know if it's the way the camera picks up the peel, but every grape and multiple pictures that I've looked at has that. So I'm going to make sure that I'm including a, you know, including it. And because I have nice tooth on the paper now, it pops up really easily. If by now you've covered over that area with pencil, which is pretty common, you can take your electric eraser and remove some of that pencil and you'll get down to the paper again and you'll be able to put in the white. So don't fret if you didn't include that. You can add it in. So I'm going to go back to working on this for another couple of hours at least. If there's anything I need to teach you that's different, I will come back. See, the more I work on it, this one's starting to look much better too. Okay, just keep your strokes deliberate. I'm getting towards the end. It's not completely done. I still have some work to do on the upper area. But the one tone that I stayed away from the entire picture was black. Remember the occlusive shadows? The shadow where one object touches another and that shadow blocks out all light. I've reserved my black pencil for that area and I'm going to use it very sparingly because black when it's used too much flattens a picture. When black is used just the right amount it brings a picture to life. In very small areas, right where objects hit each other, I'm going to add a little bit of black. The pencil I'm using is Holbein, but you can use any really, really sharp black pencil. You see what just a little bit does? It really makes those layers stick out. And this can take me a while to do, 
all the areas. What I've decided to do, because there was so much on here to teach you, I'm going to do a full grape in another video. One full grape, start to finish, slowly. So I'm going to show you in hyperlapse, I'm going to go over this in the black, and then I'm going to add a little bit more white to it, and we'll call it at the end. I'm going to add some cast shadows to it so you can see the difference. Now I'm using a 90% warm gray and wherever, okay, this is on top of here, okay? So there's going to be a cast shadow right underneath. Okay, this is on top of this. So you'll have a cast shadow on that. This is on top of this. So this would be a cast right underneath. Now, in the photo that I have, it looks like the um, photographer uh, washed out his cast shadows. That's, you know, just photo editing and... But in reality, there is cast shadow there. Okay, this one's nice and deep. Th these are deeper than these. So your cast shadow goes on this one. And this is almost completely in cast. So it would be casting from this and casting in from these other ones. takes a long time but it's the cast shadows that are going to make it three-dimensional now this one's on top of this one and it seems that even this one in here is on top of this one but it juts out, so out here would be light, while right in here would be dark. And you see how the more I'm working on it and the more I'm adding as far as my tones, the more to life this picture is coming. Now this is on top of that one, but it's not dark enough.
And the closer it gets to that um, occlusive shadow, which is that one that hits it and blocks that wall light, you do a gradient from there. So in there, my occlusive shadow is right underneath and then I cast out from there, lighter. And I can use a little bit more in there with the black. Right just in the darkest area. So this could take hours and hours to do. Now, as we get closer to the leaf, there's going to be all sorts of cast shadows in here from the leaf coming down. And that's a pretty hard structure. Um, until I do that leaf, I don't want to do too much in there because I don't want to make it too dark. See, right in here, it's the wrong tone. Got to keep checking because this tone in here has to be darker than the ones on top. But I really haven't worked on the top area that much. I've kind of been, you could tell, I've been concentrating in this area over here. And these are not as done. See this? guys way in there but it's still on top of this guy so this guy is way in the back because you can tell the way the line is so I'm gonna darken up over here and have it come very light but this is still very light. See, look in this area. It's like perfect in here. My shading. Eh, it just takes time. That's why I said earlier that if you're new, a lot of people are afraid to go as, to keep going longer. Oh, it's taking so long. Art takes a long time. Colored pencil is the slowest medium that there is. There are artists that will work months on just one picture. So this is on top of this. So there should be an occlusive shadow right there to bring it out. And then we'll just take it out with some, spread it out with some French gray. I also need a lot more detail on it. I don't have a lot of the dots that should be on it on there yet. This one's got too much Prussian in it. Let me see. This is on top of it. Do my occlusive shadow. Bring it down. I'm going to dull down some of that Prussian green. And it's got a stem, so I'm going to put a little bit of black underneath the stem. OK, 
Okay, it's becoming more and more realistic. The more hours you put into it, the more, the more it happens. And this is my center light. Remember, we haven't put on any highlights yet. A little bit of light snuck in there, giving it a little shine. Okay, if you haven't if you're a little bit confused about the colors and stuff that I'm using and some of the things that I've been talking about, there are six other videos in the book that I did that will help bring this and your understanding of what I'm talking about. You can get the book with all the pictures, the sketches on my Etsy site. I left it. The URL is in the description. And our video lessons are once a week. It's getting there. I'm liking this more and more. Okay, it's, this is peeping out from underneath this leaf. I'll lighten it up until the leaf gets done. So just remember we're doing card green grape and the analogous colors that go along with it. See how I only put a little bit on and then I step back and look at it? And sometimes you even have to walk away from it to judge it properly. After a while, your eyes can... Oh, it popped. Your eyes can start playing tricks on you. This one's nice and out in the light. Okay, well, I'm going to stop until... I get that area up there done. Now I'm gonna just use a gummy eraser and clean it up a bit. And the unfortunate thing with YouTube is that I can't use something under my hand. You guys should be using paper underneath your hand. But if I do that, I block out the picture. And I get complaints that you can't see the picture. And this is a gummy eraser. It just helps to clean things up. Okay. I will see you in my next video. Take care.